Hey folks, John from Complete Technology Solutions, your friend in the computer business. So you guys have probably noticed a lot lately, we've been doing a lot of the uh, the pepper ball guns. And for those wondering, yes, I do still have the burner and it is my sidearm right now. Um, and I carry it with me all the time. Y you load these things up with pepper balls and frankly, it, they're nasty. They really are. Um, not only for self-defense from uh, people, but in, in general from animals or whatever else you need. Um, and it's a non-lethal option, and we're all looking for that. Now, in testing these fairly, though, we had to have some way to put them head-to-head -head and get something other than just a field observation of what they were doing. Check out what I got for us. So before we go into this, I want to explain a couple things about, uh, uh, there's a couple ways to measure air gun uh, power, of one of which is called joules, which is the actual, the muzzle energy that's coming out of these weapons, and then the FPS, which is actually how many feet per second the ball is actually traveling. Now, you can actually get the muzzle velocity up on these so high that you cannot fire regular pepper balls because they'll rupture them inside the chamber, and you don't want that. Uh, obviously, the goal is not to dust yourself, it's to dust the person that's actually coming at you um, this will give us a little bit of an option to find out where that sweet spot is where we're not rupturing the balls but we're getting the maximum velocity this is the caldwell ballistic precision chronograph what this will allow us to do is to fire the ball through the chronograph and it will give us an exact measurement of how many feet per second the ball is moving on future tests for all of the pepper ball guns and the head-to-heads that are coming up, we're going to be using this in order to tell, well, number one, to get a good assessment, but number two, a lot of these things can be adjusted, and I want to see where that sweet spot is. Once again, guys, we want maximum velocity, but without the risk of rupturing the pepper ball in the chamber. So this is the first step in that, uh, that little process. So let's crack this thing open and see what we got here. By the way, I'm hoping everybody out there had a fantastic Christmas. Um, I know I did. It was great with family and friends, and that's, you know, that's what it's really about, right? Um, as far as 2022, guys, I'm crossing my fingers. This will probably be my last broadcast of 2022 till next year, um, but <laughs> I want to say it's got to get better, but we all live through 2021, so yeah. All right, so let's crack this open and see what we got in here. Now, this was, incidentally, one of my Christmas presents from a family member, my wife. Awesome present. Wow. All right, guys, let's take this out. Looks like there's not a lot of packaging here. All right. Okay, those are the rails to fire. Th nice. This is going to have more. I was actually kind of concerned how narrow this was going to be because to hit the target and still shoot through a narrow area is kind of, yeah. All right, look at that, guys. All right, so what we're going to do is I want to give you guys a little once-over on this thing, what it looks like. Let me get everything else out of the box. comes with a little carrying bag, and that looks like an attachment to connect it to your phone. And as I recall, there is an app for this, but there's supposed to be a little screen. Yes, there is right here, a little screen that actually gives you the FPS uh, as you are firing. Um, that's actually pretty cool. Now, over here, you can actually make adjustments on it, and this adjustment would be feet per second or meters per second. Um, I'm, I'm going to stick the feet per second uh, just because it's something we can all sort of associate with. So, so let's put this together and take a look at it here. I got our little instruction manual. Well, guys, once again, I do all this live. I want you to see it exactly as I'm seeing it as we do it here. Okay. So, we're going to go ahead. i tell you what I'm going to do. Let me go through this. I'm going to assemble this, and we'll come right back and take a look at it, see what she looks like. And just like that, there you have it. So, uh, one thing about this, it was very, very simple to assemble this thing. The truth is, all you had was these two wires that came off little holders here, and they went down there to create a V. The lenses are actually right here, and you can actually see those on Stumpy. But look how wide that area is, guys. I mean, that's huge. I ought to definitely be able to actually hit a target and fire it down range while still putting this in frame. And with that as a note, uh, oh, one other thing that is kind of important, this thing does take 9-volt batteries, um, and it's got a place for the 9-volt battery in the bottom and a spare battery. That way you've always got one when you're in the field because that will happen, I guarantee it. So um, I just want to go ahead and give this thing a quick test to make sure it works. So here's what we're going to do. You guys from our last video saw our TR-50. 
which is quickly one of my favorite looking weapons we've ever had. Uh, I'm going to load this one up, one cylinder through this thing, and then uh, we're going to see how it does. want to see if we can actually see some FPS on this. So let me get repositioned. You guys know the drill. Down the hallway. We're not shooting for accuracy today. We're just shooting to see how the meter works. I'll be right back. All right, guys, so as you can see, what we got here is we've got our normal target set up way down there. Um, I'm not concerned with accuracy on this one. All I'm concerned with is I want to see if the meteor actually picks up these rounds. Uh, these are the 50 caliber balls that we're firing out of this, and you guys saw this on the last video. In case you missed it, I'll throw a link up there for you. So let's go ahead and let's switch on our meter here, and we're going to go to feet per second. And that should give us a little meeting right there. There we go. All right, so it's in feet per second, as you can see right there. And we're going to go ahead... Now, I'm going to have to fire this from behind, guys, so once I get everything on and all that, the, the ball is actually going to be flying right next to the camera, and no, I will not hit the camera, and it will go down there and hit the box, and all we're looking at is the meter right there, all right? So, here we go. I'm going to go ahead and charge the weapon. There we go. We are charged. We are live, and we are going to fire at the box. Here we go. I got to figure out where the error two, so I got to figure out where the sweet spot is. Hold on. I need to fire right there is the sweet spot. Ah, angle was wrong. So 238. 215, 198, 220, 222, 224. Now that I've got the sweet spot, I know where I need to aim. 214. 182, 193, 221, 226, 219. All right, guys, so as you can see, I had to find the sweet spot there, and I left that first section in so you could see that I was either not hitting the top or the bottom of the sensor. The truth is you have to hit dead center on both sensors in order to read that. So I had to be pretty close to the camera to get that shot to come through. But it did, and it looked really, really good. And as you guys could see, it did record the speeds. Now, the first three or four shots off this, we did not get recorded, so it obviously fires a lot faster than that. But as you can see, on this in stock configuration with a relatively new cartridge, because it was three or four shots down, you were still in that 220 to 230 range. The first shot I'd be willing to bet is probably closer to 260, 270. But guess what? On a head-to-head, -head, we're going to find that out. Give me one sec. I'm going to reposition. We'll come back and talk about this. Be right back. Well, there you go, guys. So, you know, it, it's one of those things that I never in a million years would have thought I would ever need. But now that we're doing all these pepper ball guns, I feel that this is going to really benefit the channel, especially when you guys want to see exactly what they're doing. And um, I understand that concern. I, I'd like to know, too. Uh, the feet per second is incredibly important. How fast are we getting downrange with these rounds? Uh, and the jewels are typically listed on the box when you buy the weapon. But like I said, that can generally be uh, 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 adjusted on the weapon itself. And we're going to go through each one of those individually and show you how to do that too. So, but you can see me looking back through here. It's pretty darn cool. Well, guys, thank you so much for watching. If I don't talk to you, have a fantastic new year. Don't forget to check out the podcast we're going to be doing up on Tuesday. I'll be doing it remotely. And I'll be continuing the gameplay on that horror game. We'll see what happens, all right? Well, thanks for watching, guys. Have a great week and a fantastic weekend, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.